how would you advise someone going about getting a sports analytics job? What are the uh, key fundamental steps there? Well, so getting a sports analytics job is not all that different from getting a traditional, you know, analytics job. And, you know, I, I've listened to some of your other podcasts and one of the biggest things that I always recommend to everyone, almost for any type of job, is to, is to gather as much work experience as you can get. And work experience doesn't necessarily have to be like working at another company. Work experience can be done through volunteering. It can be done through personal projects. It can be done a whole mess of different ways. So especially in sports, you really have to have a portfolio. You have to be able to say how you can create value for a team. If I've done a project where I say, oh, you know, for you know, XYZ basketball team, if, if you make these changes, if my analysis says that if you make these changes, you might be able to win one or two more games a year. If I am that organization, why would I not hire you to actually just like purchase that analysis from you effectively and eventually get more of that type of stuff from you in the future? So you're opening so many doors just through like the value you're creating through these projects, but you're also learning the skills yourself. You know, through these projects, that's the best way to learn any of the techniques that are out there. You know, a little bit different than, um, than analytics in general. Sports analytics kind of has its own, its own language and its own specifics and some like out of the box models that people use. So, you know, rather than just always using like different types of regression techniques, there's like, you know, weighted models that people have you know, calculated over time rather than approximated. You know, an, an example of that is probably the most basic model in baseball, which is called the Pythagorean theorem of baseball. So basically Bill James, who's like the godfather of baseball analytics, he found that if you add up basically the number, well, like a function of the number of runs that you've scored and the number of runs that are scored against you can equate to your winning percentage. I think it's like uh, runs scored, you know, squared over uh, runs scored plus run scored against squared, something like that. But it's a great approximation of this winning percentage. And that's like knowledge that's passed down. It's not built from like uh, a previous model beforehand. We're not, we're not projecting that out. So you have to understand those fundamentals. And the best way to do that is through these projects and through just reading a ton of stuff out there. Uh, the other thing that I think is especially relevant in this field is sharing that information. So either putting it on GitHub, either doing that in Kaggle or uh, just, you know, just tweeting it out, you know, the, the sports analytics community is so active. And if something is interesting, it'll get a lot of traction and you'd be shocked how many times the things that get traction really lead to like great opportunities for that person. You know, for mm, example, yeah. the, for so example, I was about to say, no, um, Michael, I just interviewed Michael Glarnick who, uh, I don't know if you, you checked out the, the podcast highlight we, we posted, I think on Wednesday of this week, but I mean, his, his blog is getting two to 300,000 views a month right now. Yeah. And he's writing on medium. And he said, even just like answering questions on, um, you know, different websites like Reddit or Facebook, um, that has led to people saying, Oh, wow, this is a really insightful answer. Yeah. You want to come work for my company? Yeah. Well, I mean, even, you know, there's a couple different tiers of that. Like, like projects are great. One for learning two for, like actually putting yourself out there and getting noticed. But three, there are so many like data science projects out there that just turn into companies. Like I build a great mm -hmm. model, I wrap a business around it. And like, I don't even need to look for a job if I do that. And to oh, me, that's, that's fascinating. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like to me, there, aside from like, yes, you're spending time. But if you're interested in this field, there's no better way that you can spend your time, you know, other than doing projects, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I was thinking about that this morning, actually, of how... Um, I'm putting like a shit ton of work into the YouTube channel, but it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. It feels like, um, like the, the analogy I made is, um, I don't know if you played those world building games when you're a kid where it's oh, like yeah. you, you have your castle and then you send your troops out here. And then all of a sudden your map, it goes from being black everywhere to just eliminate, eliminate on your castle to all of a sudden you can see this. And I feel like that's what I'm doing. It's like, I'm gamifying my day to day workflow and it's like, you know, instead of being some nerd just sitting in their mom's basement, I'm like actually making money. It's not like just, you know, these imaginary coins that you're getting, you know, well, in no, some yeah, game. I, I think that that is like a, probably one of the most important things is like making sure that it is fun and that you're enjoying it. 
you know, if you don't enjoy doing projects, if you don't enjoy doing analytics, if you don't like working in Tableau, like it's probably not, this field probably isn't a good fit for you. You know what I mean? And like, it's so hard to do something that's like against the grain for yourself. Um, You know, if that is the case for you, you know, there's two options. You either stop, which might be advisable, or you can find a way to enjoy it. You know, you find a way to like get excited about this. You know, if I'm doing vanilla analytics, not on sports, it's not overwhelmingly interesting to me. But if I'm Mm -hmm. working on sports projects, I, I spend countless hours just, just like toying with the models, having fun, and just like learning so much about this field. So, you know, you really have to find your niche. You have to find your projects that are interesting to you to, to like harness that energy that you get from, from those concepts. Well, it also you're kind, of, kind of gets into this topic of if you're not passionate about data science or analytics, people like you can, who are, are not just going to be 10% better than you. They're going to be like 2000% better because they, that's what they think about, you know, like I, like it's, I'm starting to notice it in my own life in that I'm like waking up and having dreams about like new content that I'm creating or, you know, um, like how I'm going to pitch this new deal. Like it's, it's like really sunk into my subconscious and I'm like, and I'm like really thinking from kind of like a, a deeper level about it. It's not just like, you know, I worked at, Volvo trucks for you know six months is, and two consecutive internships. I did not think about that. <laughs> I was like in there, did my time, did you know the work that I had to, and then got out. And it was just like I want. I was like a weekend warrior at that point. I just like wanted to yeah. live for well, the weekends. You know, you you learn to a certain extent what you don't enjoy by trying a bunch of different things. And so I, you know, right. I after school, I was like, you know what, I want to try and like work in a in a different role. Than, than, than like my current position. So I left, I like, I basically took a year and I worked as a, a product owner where I was managing data scientists and I was, I was working on, um, you know, like showing them, oh, like combining the actual uh, business with the data science model. So we're like the integration specialist, I'm overseeing these project and these data scientists. And you know, that just wasn't that interesting to me. You know, the, the analytics are very high level, like the data scientists were really, really smart, but I just wasn't, I wasn't like stimulated by it. Mm-hmm. And I know that, you know, I think you and, and myself both kind of fall in that entrepreneurial category where like sometimes you, it's easier to get out of bed for yourself than it is for, for a company if, if you don't always necessarily believe in it. So, yeah, um, you know, again, that, that applies almost directly to this data science path is that you know, you try some roles, you try an internship in this field. And like, if you can't get enough of it, then it's probably like an incredible fit for you. And if you're like, if you can't wait to leave, <laughs> uh, that's, you know, that's, that's a sign in the other direction.